You all enjoyed the last one so much, so here we go again. I'm here to bring you another round of HHN32 updates, and a lot has changed since last time. We have more defined props in each of the scare zones, some confirmed food items for HHN32 via the new Taste of Terror event which began this past Thursday, new food booths that will serve said food items emerging within the park, and so much more. So let's not waste any more time and hop right into these updates because we got a lot to talk about. First up, I want to talk scare zone updates, because where last time we saw a lot of initial truss work and lighting rigs go up, now we're starting to see what these scare zones truly have in store. Starting with Dr. Oddfellow's collection of horror in the front of the park, we have the recent arrival of this pretty unavoidable truss and platform. This looks similar to the large truss that houses our beloved red neon HHN sign, although this one is a bit shorter and slimmer. As I mentioned, there is a platform up top, so I'm curious whether there will be static set pieces up there, or even potentially some sort of scare actor encounter. We also recently got this large pillar on the side of the Universal Studios store wrapped in black scrim. Not sure how this will tie in, maybe with some sort of design tying back into the grander Oddfellow theme. And speaking of Oddfellow, our first big set piece for this zone has arrived just outside the new Universe store. As you can see, we have a very classical carriage that carries a very distinct feel around it, reminding me almost of the 2021 Tribute Store facade with its color scheme and style. And this carriage is accompanied by a little platform, likely to be the home of Dr. Oddfellow himself, if I were to take a guess. This could be him welcoming you into the event, or even performing a kill here, which I think would be really, really cool. I love the detail on this carriage, and even if we don't get really anything else in this scare zone, I'm happy with this right here. Now moving forward into our Vamp 69 scare zone over in New York, we've seen quite a few changes from when we last checked in. For one, our lovely stage has been adorned with rugs, live instruments, which is really weird in the Florida heat, and a backdrop with the odd fellow symbol on it. Around the stage are also some motorcycles that add that lived in sort of feel for this environment, really making you feel like you're in a music festival. We also have these great banners, which were added not too long ago, but do a great job in capturing some of the graphic art style of the decade. However, I think the main attraction for the scare zone in recent weeks has been the return of the HHM bus with this colorful and eye-catching paint scheme. I think this is great bringing back a classic set piece from HHM history, but this time we're continuing the groovy aesthetic found on the front end of the zone with the color scheme on the bus. Really, really liking what we're seeing in Vamp 69, and I can't wait to see what other little additions we see that fully flesh out this environment. Moving up to Shipyard 32, we've been slow Slowly seeing additions that really flesh out the concept and add to the overall theming. I for one was not the most hyped for this scare zone when it was initially announced, but since it has been announced we've been seeing a lot more set pieces creeping in that's getting me more and more excited for it. We start out with this blue crate that really reminds me of the cube from Hellraiser for some reason, and right next to it is a cage with a speaker meaning somebody is gonna be in there. And as we move to the center towards the Fast and Furious gift shop, we're also seeing some additional structures added to enhance the shipyard theme such as these concrete barricades and the beginning of a buoy-like structure appearing on the right-hand side, as well as more crates here in the middle. However, my favorite piece of this scare zone so far comes on the opposite end on the water, where we see a seemingly normal crate. However, the sides are actually sheer, meaning someone is going to be popping out of there. I think that is a really cool effect. This scare zone, I think, will really be made once the actors are in it, but from what I'm seeing so far, I am liking it. However, the next scare zone, Jungle of Doom Expedition Horror is truly taking things to the next level. All of the set pieces we previously discussed have been enhanced with lots and lots of foliage, which really adds to the depth. And instead of larger set pieces in the walkway, we have lots of crates and barrels scattered about, really enhancing that haphazard explorer vibe. However, we do also have some big set pieces that begin telling our story, but they're more in the background, such as the parachutes lodged in the trees and that breathtaking crashed plane, which is really made by all of the foliage added to it. But it gets even better, as we now have living creatures in this zone, with giant fruit bats hanging from those wires that tied the trusses together, as well as the giant spiders in the trees covered with spider webs. And if you look close enough, those aren't just any spiders, my friends. Those are spiders from Bugs Eaten Alive, and it makes me so happy to see them reusing props like this, as it's
it stands now, Jungle of Doom has completely transformed into being a nearly complete zone and has jumped up my hype list 100%. Now moving to Dark Zodiac, I'm kind of surprised at how little we have in this zone compared to the others. Outside of the entryway trusses that I showed before, the main developments come by way of these platforms featuring different Zodiac signs, all with this industrial aesthetic. I like what we have so far, it's very different from the zone over in Singapore, but I just wish we had a little more to go off of. But I know that'll be there in the weeks to come. With this one, I'm really, really hoping for a Jungle of Doom style transformation that takes it from a zone that I'm excited for to one I can't wait to walk through. Now, while Scare Zone updates are very, very exciting to see, there have also been a lot of updates in regards to the food aspect of HHN. And to talk about that, we must first talk about the taste of terror. Now, I did mention this before in the big Orlando dump video, but there was a lot going on there, so you might have missed it. Basically, this is a separately ticketed event that allows you to try a good amount of the specialty HHN food and beverages before the event begins. And this past week saw our first event night, giving us an impression on this new dining experience, but also confirmation on some of the foods. I'm going to throw up the event menu here on the screen, and while I can't give any opinions about the food or the event itself because I have not been, I think it's important to look at the menu because we're going to be talking about a few of these food items as they relate to construction that's happening within the park right now. Over in the New York section of the park, just as you turn from Minion Cafe, we've seen a food stand go up that is very similar to the Surfer Boy Pizza Restaurant from Stranger Things 4. So we can assume that these items, that being the Surfer Boy French Bread Pizza itself and the Surfer Boy Tropical Dream Punch Cocktail are going to be featured at this food stand. I love when they do these direct translations of locations from the IP to the event as a food booth really shows the dedication to theming and we see that in a couple different ways over here and right next to the surfer boy pizza we have a very rustic food stand that looks very inspired by the upcoming yeti campground kills house and it looks like here you're going to be able to get your bloody campground poutine and the bloody snowball cake even though this isn't based on an ip i do just want to acknowledge the level of theming that is going into these food booths i know there was a lot of criticism for last year's food booths as they weren't super highly themed and and that was the whole point, but I really like going back to this really intricate theming with the food booths this year, and that is especially the case with our next food booth. As moving down the road where the Christmas story is towards the mummy, we have a food stand obviously themed to The Last of Us. I love all the little details here. I love the firefly symbol. I love seeing that Fedra logo. It all looks so great. And here you're going to be able to get the left behind ravioli, which was a definite highlight of this Taste of Terror event. And for one themed food booth to another, we're going to move over to San Francisco just outside Fast and Furious Supercharge, where we return to the Chucky food booth. Here you're going to be able to get your fried till the end chicken. And even though it's returning for the second year in a row, I'm excited to see this food booth back. I think it'll stand out a little more and make a little more sense with them actually having a Chucky house at the event this year. And its location just outside Fast and Furious Supercharge, where the Chucky house is rumored to go, will make it a really great way to continue celebrating the killer doll. And outside of the more IP based item set to debut at this year's event. We also have some items from the Dia de los Muertos location over in Hollywood, which is also returning from last year. And outside of that, we also have a couple more mystery food booths that have appeared in the park, such as this Rainbow Room inspired one in front of Rip Ride Rocket, and this castle themed one just outside of Diagon Alley. And while not a themed food booth, it seems like foods and beverages will be served in the covered seating area outside of Animal Actors, just because this isn't very themed. I'm guessing this is going to be your basic alcoholic drinks as well as your twisted taters. Because of all the stuff going on with Kid Zone, they can't have as many booths over there, so they're having to resort to some new locations like this one under Animal Actors. While we've gotten lots of updates in regards to Halloween Horror Nights 32 food this week, there's still plenty more to come, so stay tuned for more updates. Once we get the full menus, I'm going to be doing a full menu video breakdown, but this is a pretty solid start for adding food into the park for Halloween Horror Nights, and there definitely will be more in the weeks to come. Now, when you roam through the New York section of the park right now, you'll see lots of progress occurring when it comes to scare zones and food booths, but there have been some slight changes that seem to blend into the background, but are pretty curious when considering some of the other clues we've gotten for this event. Specifically, I want to talk about Boris Schuster's window, which has gotten a strange Cthulhu figure that's appeared front and center. 
Now I mentioned in the last update video that the Tribute Store teaser featured names like Tim Foil and Charlie McPherson, two characters who have direct ties to Boris Schuster. And while I can't say how Cthulhu ties in directly, maybe there's a character like this featured in the original horror comic that's taking over the inside of this year's Tribute Store. Very, very interesting. I'm going to be tracking this over the next couple weeks to see if this pans out. And on the topic of the Tribute Store, we just got some exciting news about the personalization option for this year's store. Now the idea of putting your face in the tribute store isn't new. This has been something that's been somewhat of a tradition over the past few years. However, this year I think we have the coolest one yet, where it's indicated on a sign outside of the Five and Dime in Hollywood, you can insert yourself on one of five comic book covers to be located inside the store. Diving into the designs themselves, the first one features this new character named the Curator, who may likely find his way into the store itself somehow. The second features these undead skeletons. The third is a noir style cover and features a shadow of what looks to be Boris Schuster, as well as a tentacle monster similar to Cthulhu or the one from Case Files Unearthed. The fourth features a demon sort of creature with a fiery background. And the fifth one features what looks to be a sinister serial killer. I really love these designs. I can't wait to get myself in there as I've never done this before. Let me know though, which one of these designs is your favorite? I really love the one featuring this new curator character, as well as the Boris one, of course. Now I've been talking a lot about Boris, but he's not the only fictional character residing in New York that has a tie to this event. As moving just downstairs, we see a mysterious card in the window of Madame Bazile, the resident fortune teller, that reads, Destiny has sent me on a journey, currently traveling with Dr. Oddfellow and his traveling oddities. I love this, as it not only ties in more fictional characters and their storefronts in the New York section to Halloween Horror Nights, but also adds to Oddfellow's reach across the park, really elevating his icon status. And based on this, I feel like we're going to see this character come to life in either the front of the park scare zone, the twisted origins house, or possibly both. And I'd really love it if they continued fleshing this character out, maybe giving her some more lore, more backstory, making her almost like a magic Adam Leota style character for HHN, I think that would be really, really interesting. Finally, for my last update, I want to talk about something that is confirmed in both Orlando and Hollywood, the all new Peacock Horror Bar. So even though this has been confirmed, we don't really know much about it, and there's been a lot that's been piquing my interest about this new addition. So basically, in continuing their cross promotion with their streaming service, Universal is creating a new bar that will serve different offerings based on Peacock's horror IP in a nightclub style atmosphere and they are leaning into the Peacock Horror IP, and this immediately got me curious as to what or who we will actually see in this bar. Hollywood's offerings specify Chucky and The Purge as notable properties that will have offerings at this bar, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is the home of more Blumhouse IP as well, perhaps things like Insidious, the Exorcist Believer, and the fan favorite Megan, who'd honestly make for a great photo op. However, there has been a rumor floating around that we may actually see fan favorite SNL character David S. Pumpkins appear in this bar, and that is the biggest wild card of all in my opinion. I can't deny it will be the weirdest and coolest thing to happen when it comes to this bar, and if they have characters like that coming to this area, I cannot wait to see what else they have in store here. Anyways, those are the most recent HHN32 updates. As you can see, a lot is happening here, which makes sense as we're just about 20 days or so away from the event itself. I want to know what in here excites you, what maybe doesn't. I want to hear all your thoughts about everything in the comments below. So let me know. This video was originally meant to be an in-park vlog, but my audio when I shot the vlog was so terrible, and I didn't want to deliver that to you all. I wanted to do something a little better, a little more put together. However, the next update will be shot in the park. I know y'all like those in-park HHN updates, and I like making them. So I'll be back in the park next week to shoot that one. Anyways, if you like this video and like HHN32 updates, vlogs, preparation videos, history, and things of that nature, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I want to thank you all for watching this one, and I will, of course, see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.